So, welcome once again from LiveBoardSnooker.tv with me, Mark Johnson Allen, for our third televised match of today. Here at the Accurate Antwerp Open in Belgium at the Lotto Arena. We've already seen uh, the world's number one, Mark Selby, come through comfortably in his match when you're 4-0 against the Amerton Urien Hurstens. And then John Higgins defeating yeah. Lee Page. Yeah. The same scoreline, four frames to nil. Now it's the turn of Michael Holt and Steve Davis, two real characters. Just a minute. Though. And Davis, even though he's... Uh, okay, best of seven. First frame, Steve Davis to break. One in the world. Still one of the most popular players on the circuit. Still loves the game, still sees it as his hobby, even though he's, uh, he's made a career out of it. Still a very big name. On paper, Holt is favourite. But you never know what you're going to get with this man. He's got a new cue. Seems to like it. And if he's confident and feeling good about himself, he can still beat anyone. As we mentioned earlier, 11 tables in this arena. So apart from when the uh, the match is finished and the, uh, the table has to be cleaned, there's always 11 matches going on at any one time. I'll keep you up to date with all the score lines. No real shocks of the day so far. Obviously with these uh, European Tour events, amateur players are allowed in to compete. But the big names have come safely through up to now. This is probably on paper the toughest match of this last 128 draw. And so the two of them are Roy McLeod's one frame each with Jimmy Robertson. Barry Hawkins is one up over the lady Rianne Evans. Mark Davis three up on Jürgen van der Bosch. I'm sure that match is finished, I'll check that one. Gary Wilson two and up on Gerald Green. Paul Davidson, Ricky Norris still three two on table five. Ali Carter looks like he's going to take his opening frame on table six against Ryan Coulson. Nigel Bond, three up now against the amateur uh, Justin Astley. Table nine, Jamie Cope just got underway there against the, uh, the Belgian player Jürgen van Roy. Andrew Norman lost his first frame against Stop. Anthony McGill. And Dave Gilbert, Sean O'Sullivan, that match starts at 8.30 this morning. That's a uh, three each. It's been a tough match. Great red there from Holt. Player by his own omission feels that he hasn't really uh, fulfilled his potential. Let's just say. Good season last year. My God. Yeah, he, uh, he's reached four quarterfinals, ranking quarterfinals in his career. He's won a couple of PTC events as well, so he is capable of beating the best players. He's just doing it in the main ranking events. I think that's hurt him over the years. I like this man. Has won just about everything there is to win. Still, absolutely loves the game. Opening two matches here on LiveWallSnooker.tv really were um, very one sided, weren't they? Both 4 0 results. I don't think we're going to see that in this match. Davis extremely calculated. Holt's the more attacking of the two players, but can also get slightly frustrated if things don't go his way. So it'd be interesting to, uh, to see how this one develops. His new heavier cue has helped him.
So unlike the, the main ranking events, you see straight best of seven, there's no mid-session interval. Imperative to get off to a good start. This is the man that dominated the game in the 80s. Six world titles. Set just about every record in snooker before a certain Mr. Stephen Hendry came along. And then changed it once again. But in terms of knowledge, I don't think anyone can surpass Davis. There's just about everything there is to know and still on his day, very, very capable. His main target is to make sure that his, his ranking position isn't higher than his age. And he's very much on the cusp at the moment, 55 years of age, 51 in the world. So his manager, Barry Hearn, has urged him to try and keep playing to the age of 60. What a tremendous feat that would be. Cracking shot. Halt the uh, the fitness fanatic. I think the key for Holt today is that he doesn't get frustrated because Davis just... His concentration levels are quite superb. He thoroughly enjoys the challenge, whereas some of the younger players just want to get on with it. Both players haven't settled, have they? A nearby start. This is the one thing that I fear for Holt. I'm not saying that it will happen, but he, he is a player that does like to get on with it, whereas Davis, obviously, he just does his own thing. And if Davis can control the tempo, he's got every chance in this match. Well, so that is one thing, control the tempo. The other thing is making sure you can pop the ball, so... pace when you're playing it like that you're always chancing to luck and I don't know whether it's worked it's out for him. <coughs> Thank 
14. Fifteen. Well, this is where Davis has struggled over the years. Is this kind of shot? Twenty-one. Nicely played off the knuckle, but it disappeared. Please do that, however. Twenty eight. And it's fair to say that both players have a steady start to the season, nothing spectacular at all. So, all fairness to uh, to Michael Holt, a couple of weeks ago he did get to the, uh, the semi finals over in Poland before losing to uh, Jamie Burnett. So, I suppose out of the two, Holt potentially showing more form. And this is a very good start for Davis. Always needing a, bit, a little bit of luck when you're playing that shot. Well, how's it worked out? 36. Steve Davis. 36. A shame, but it's been fairly typical of Davis's form over the last couple of seasons. There's been that kind of shot, that kind of miss that has cost him dearly. Been very good at getting himself into a position where the frame could be his before missing a shot that, let's just say, 10 years ago he wouldn't have missed. Well, Holt did well there, really, to. Uh, control his emotions because that's so frustrating you see a player miss a sit and you think well I'm in you come to the table there's absolutely nothing on did the right thing played safe let's have a little look around the tables at the moment what's going on no big shocks of the day so far as I said earlier Mark Selby John Higgins those are two big names they both came safely through against their, their opponents both winning 4-0 Warren McClay is out on table 2 at the moment he's 2 up on Jimmy Robertson Barry Hawkins now 2-0 up on Rianne Evans. Gerard Green's got that back. He was 2-0 down to Gary Wilkinson. He's levelled. That's two frames each. Ali Carter took his opening frame against the amateur Ryan Corston. And Nigel Bonds can his 2-0 up. Anthony McGill on table 10. There's now 2 up on Andrew Norman. So, this unique tournament where amateurs compete against professionals so far today hasn't produced any shocks. The closest one was uh, Ryan Day. He was taken all the way before winning 4 3 over Hans Blankart from Belgium.
That could be expensive. Not happy with that one, and rightly so. So David just has to keep everything nice and simple here. So. Eight. The black currently unavailable, but doesn't mean you need to worry about that. 43 points ahead, the pink will make that 49. If you can take a few more words and, and highish value colours, the frame should be his. Fourteen. Fifteen. Please to see that one disappear. I'm going to bridge over the other red. Made it more difficult than he would have liked. And 50 points ahead. Pink to follow. Davis looking fairly solid today. Amazing, isn't it, how you consider that Stephen Hendry retired last season. Much the disappointment 21. of many players and many fans, actually, myself included, and yet Hendry at that time was what, 43 years of age, and Davis, 55, still going strong, still has the appetite and the desire to want to compete at the highest level. Twenty-two. Well, they're not the cleanest of pots at the moment, but they are going in. He played. Twenty-seven. Watched the blue all the way. Knew it was in. Focused on the cue ball. So one more red. Is it good Twenty-eight. Open? Sure to see that, isn't it? If he changed his mind and stayed down the shot. Well, then that's what you get. Steve Davis, 28. I read his coaching book when I first started. Whatever you do, <laughs> if you can't make your mind up, get back up, readdress the shot, and start again. He didn't listen to well. himself there. A little bit naughty from Davis. That pink would have absolutely guaranteed the frame. He's still favourite, but it's not beyond the realms of possibility that Hulk can get the snookers he needs. Eight. That's been massively unlucky there. Well, first frame. Doesn't matter now. Steve Davis. Hulk makes his way back to the, uh, the chair. Davis looks on. I'm safe for the knowledge, he's taking that opening frame. Nothing fancy. Just very, very solid. Small break of 36 helps. And there you see, Davis won it up on Michael Holt. No 
some real big shocks of the day so far. Mark Davis did come through in the end, not Steve Davis, Mark Davis against his amateur opponent, Jürgen van der Bosch. I spoke about Ryan Bay just scraping through the deciding frame against his amateur opponent. They've held 4-0 over Tony Drago, that was very impressive indeed. Joel Walker finally defeated Michael Wilde by four frames to two. Mark Fu was fantastic earlier this morning against Peter Lang, made two centuries. Including a like 131, 116, 131's the uh, highest of the tournament so far. For this matchup here on the TV table, without doubt the, uh, the toughest we've seen so far. Second frame, like a hold to Rick. All the top players in action over the next few days. This uh, opening chance in the second round. Well, I can only presume the red at the bottom of the pack does go into the uh, the right corner pocket. Okay. If that is the case, he, uh, he desperately under hit the cue ball there because quite clearly if he takes this on, it's all or nothing, isn't it? You know, the reds are going to spit everywhere. Yeah, he feels it's too risky. You can't blame him. Went for the attack like the safety shot. Eight. That was a very poor shot from Davis. Eight. Steve Davis. Eight.
with the, the top players used to these best of nine matches and that mid-session is going to four frames the it's amazing the intensity of a best of seven you need to get off to a very good start you find yourself two down in the best of nine you've still got plenty of time to get back into it best of seven well you're really up against it so a huge train this for Holt and I believe that it's very important that he wins nine Well, twice he's played that shot, twice he's unhit it. 16. That's a fairly decent crowd here at Antwerp. In a very early start, obviously a lot of people at work, but Snooker has always been well supported in Belgium. at the moment the balls just aren't settling as they would like it's another awkward shot one he should get but you know he had to force the cue ball which the, the top <coughs> was 24 Barry Hawkins over on table three looks good for going at three nil up on Rianne Evans 25 Ali Carter has gone two up against Ryan Corson in the amateur. Over on table six. Nigel Bond. Oh, three one now against uh, Justin Asley. So Asley's got one back. Jamie Cope took his opening frame up against Jürgen Van Roy. And Anthony Hamilton is about to get his campaign underway on table 11 against Michael Leslie. 32. Remember these European Tour events allow amateurs to compete. With the very best players in the world. 33. In the first two matches today on Live World Snooker TV, we saw Mark Selby up against Jury and Hurstens, an amateur from Belgium. Selby came safely through that one 4 0. It has to be said that Hurstens had loads of chances, obviously, just couldn't quite take to the unfamiliar surroundings. And then that what? was followed by John Higgins up against Lee Page. And I have to say, Lee Page looks a, a, a very good prospect. It could have been a lot closer than the uh, the four nil scoreline suggests. And then forty one, Holt and Davis. Davis taking that opening with a break of thirty six, but Holt looking very settled here in the second frame. Forty one. I got Holt. 41. Just as I say that, can you believe it? I certainly can't. Let's be going very nicely indeed. Now, this is a really important stage of the match. If Davis can pinch this frame. 41 points down. Still plenty on the table. Well. The only small sticking point is the red below the black. But I don't know what it is, but he's not exuding any confidence at the moment. He looks to be quite nervy as he's uh, playing each shot. 
obviously not nervous of the situation, but maybe nervous of the way he feels he's queuing. Did claim to like his new queue. Seventeen. But it doesn't seem particularly positive with the way he's queuing. Still, he's at the table and he's the man in control even though he's 24 points down because there's nothing that Holt can do at the moment. It depends on this man. It's going to be a big year for Davis. I think it's crucial that he at least maintains his ranking position. Could not afford to drop out of the, uh, the top 64. It's not a good shot. Twenty-three. Steve Davis. Twenty-three. He's been a lucky boy again. Make it twenty-three from Davis. Will not be happy with the end result. Yeah, looks when discussed, but. Look at the table. Quite a huge difference in lock plays in snooker. He raised his hand halfway through. I don't know why he put a bit of side on the cue ball. It seemed to just drift off to the left hand side. When he first struck it, I thought, well, that's definitely in. But as he got to the centre pocket, it just seemed to move over to the left a touch. So the thing is, when you play at that pace, you only need to put a touch of side on that cue ball. It has an effect on the, uh, the object ball. see that one for one moment. Just checking the scoreboard, 27 points ahead, pink will make it 33, so a red and a decent colour to follow, and the frame should be safe. It's funny, but I just, I get the impression that Davis is controlling the tempo at the moment, because Holt is playing a, a fair bit slower than he usually does. 15. He's a bubbly player, he fairly bounces around the table, but... what Davis is good at though, isn't it? 16. The way he controlled the sport for so many years, controlled his opponent, did things his way if you like. Twenty-one. Twenty-two.
Like the whole 22. And frame. Well, it wasn't the uh, flashiest of frames, but it's very solid from Holt. He'll be delighted because at one stage, it looks so he's going to let Steve Davis in to pinch that one, so uh, he levels the match, and there's now one frame each. No really big stories on the other tables. Remember, the other tables in action. Table three, Barry Hawkins did take a 3 0 lead, so yes, he's three up on uh, Rianne Evans. And then Matt Davis came through on table four, even though he's still showing his 3 0 up. He won that one 4 0. Gary Wilson, Joe Green, still two frames apiece. Jamie Burnett about to get his campaign underway. Ago, losing in the final, didn't he? To Neil Robertson in Poland. The net, the man that beat Holt in the semi. So uh, we'll keep an eye on him. Ali Carter going along very nicely indeed against uh, the amateur Brian Corson on table six. Carter currently three nil ahead. Need just one more. Michael Bond three and up against Justin Astley, and he's fourteen ahead in the fifth. Jamie Cope two up on table nine. And on the other tables, not much happening at the moment. I'll keep you. Uh, Updated as and when things change. Third frame. Steve Davis and break. So I need the players flying at the moment. Still some way to go. Unusual foul on uh, Davis's cue there. You see most of the uh, fouls on all the other cues. Bright brass, very shiny, shined up by the players. But that was almost a matte colour. There was a, there's no gloss to it at all. Quite unusual. Holt looking for the uh, the brown there. That was his security blanket. Uh, didn't quite work out. The only problem for Davis here if he takes this red onto the centre pocket. Here's where the cue ball's going to be going straight into that pack of red, so is it worth the risk? Well, quite, quite clearly it wasn't. He's been lucky again. What was the value in taking that shot on there if you're going to leave the cue ball where he did? I think the problem for Davis over the last couple of seasons is that the, the game has changed, I suppose, with Hendry and O'Sullivan. That it's so attacking nowadays. You know, you've got to score heavily, and and Davis, I feel, sometimes takes shots on that he doesn't really want to play, but you can't seem to be turning them down. You need to show your opponent you're feeling confident, you're attacking, you're going to go for everything. But just sometimes it's, it almost feels like it's one shot too many. Chance here for Davis, third frame. Well, 
Mind you, whatever well, happens, both players are going to have to start showing the same form because uh, whoever wins this playing John Higgins, the way John Higgins played in that previous match, was impressive to say the least. OK, he was playing at amateur, Lee Page, who uh, obviously is, is new to this kind of situation, but when Davis got to the table, he still scored impressively. Sorry, Higgins got the table, he uh, still scored impressively. In that match, the previous match, Higgins knocked him great to 52, 85, 43 and 66. So if one of these players is to threaten Higgins... Six. And then he just starts scoring heavily. Well, I see that a few times today on this table. The uh the player's under hitting that kind 28. of shot. It shouldn't be too bummy, he doesn't look particularly impressed with it. Might be so, but it just means he's going to have to go up for the blue. Twenty-nine. It's okay. He's got enough angle to uh, get himself up and down the table. Better shot than it looks. Loading left hand side on that cue ball deserves to be on a red hit. Not sure he's finished. 34. Well, he's okay. Sort of betwixt and between, isn't he? One to the centre isn't particularly nice because where's the colour coming from? I don't think the blue goes to the right centre pocket. And the one to the corner, well, once again, cue ball isn't straightforward. Is he uh, huffs and puffs? Mind up. He's got a, a whole array of uh, extensions in his case under the table there. Gone are the days when he used to use a full butt, which is a massive cube, which basically you couldn't do anything with the white. It was, it was impossible. 
nowadays there's, uh, there's so many different options for these players to take. Uh, trying to find his way through. That's a good Five. Well played. I thought he wasn't favourite to get position on the black there, but full credit to him. This time is no problem. Finishing high on the red gives himself an angle to get back down to the black. Forty-two. So this is the time now where Dave's has struggled over the last couple of seasons. 43. I mean, it's been a fantastic break up to this point. And he should go on and win the frame. But it's been around about the 50 mark. So I don't know whether the concentration weakens or the pressure builds a little. But he's missed straightforward shots. So, um, for his sake, I would be hoping that Davis misses. Now we see it. See, there is 50. Such a shame. A real shame. Yeah. You do all that work and you miss a straightforward shot. Behind. If I had the choice of being either player here, I'd be home. You're in control of the table, aren't you? Let you know on table six, Ali Carter did not waste any time at all. The man that got the final of the World Championships earlier this year. Nine. Absolutely destroyed his opponent 4 0 in a matter of minutes. So Carter safely through to the last 64. Nigel Bond, however, another big name, is having something of a struggle over on table seven. Michael Holt. Nine. Just let you know, Bond was 3 0 up on Justin Astley. But that has been uh, reduced to 3 2. So, Nigel Bond under pressure. Bond. Well, this is Michael Holt now. I thought Holt had a great chance there to. Uh, I don't know whether he's got a headache or something's wrong, but he doesn't look completely right at the moment, does he? Holt is one of those players that I love watching, a real character, full of energy, but just seems to be flat at the moment. Eight. Nine. Seventeen. Four. Frame is more than safe for Davis. 
27. 28. Thirty-five. Steve Davis, thirty-five in the frame. Well, the misread doesn't matter. The guy has really been done that previous page of fifty from Davis. He takes that frame to be two-one. Holt's looking um, slightly uncomfortable out there. I hope he's all right. Shielding his eyes from the light. The last to score at the moment. Steve Davis two, Michael Holt one. Maury McLeod, Jimmy Robertson, that's now gone 2-2 two, two each over on table 2. Barry Hawkins looks like he's going to lose the 4th frame on table 3 to Rian Evans. It's 3 up, but Rian Evans is... Well, maybe there's a small fight back going on. She was 43 points ahead. But Hawkins is currently at the table. Joe Burnett and Michael Wosley still to get a frame on the board. I just mentioned Ali Clark. There's Ryan Corston. And Anthony Hamilton took his first frame over on table 11. He's one up against Michael Leslie. Well, for you, for you Marcus Campbell fans out there, I've been trying to get the score up, but um, it's been playing up slightly. But I can tell you, he's currently three frames each against Tura Pong Pai Boon from Thailand. Does that one decide it? Cracking setup here in Antwerp. Really takes you back to your uh, your pro am days. You can see everything that's going on. I personally used to like it. There you see in the, uh, the top left corner, Rianne Evans at the table against Barry Hawkins. Fourth frame. She is a very, like the break. very good player indeed. Davis hoping then that maybe is going to stay in the pocket. Don't know what's wrong with Holt at the moment. Doesn't look happy with himself. I'm not sure whether he's um, he's suffering a little, whether he's uh, carrying an illness or not. But it doesn't look particularly comfortable out there. Fantastic shot. Uh, Davis special that, wasn't it? Yeah, the table from Michael there, but rightly so. You got a load of left hand side on that cue ball to try and bring it back around. To nestle in behind the yellow. I'm not saying it's going to particularly give him anything because the the pack of reds are fairly tightly bunched, but still a great safety shot. So here we go, there's a left hand side on the cue ball. Needs to avoid that centre pocket. Oh, That's a challenge with this shot. You're trying to go into the right so hand side as we see it. But you want the white just to drop below that centre pocket. So it'll land on the side of the pack.
bit too much, you see. There's always the danger of the shot. Foul. Miss. What's the Davis for? Now, Miss has been called, but if the red does go, Davis will take it on. He's not sure whether the cue will just pass the black. Keep it too well, didn't he? <laughs> Referring to his strength. <laughs> he just got hold of the cue ball too well. On table three, Rhianne Evans did take that 4 3. So she's reduced the deficit. She now trails Barry Hawkins 4 1. Sorry, 3 1. recap on some of the standout results of the day so far. First day here in Antwerp. Mark Selby 4 0 up. We watched that one. He won that one over Jurian Hersdens from Belgium, the amateur. Mark Davis came through 4 0 against his Belgium opponent, Jürgen van der Bosch. Ryan Day, however, had a very, very scared, didn't he? Just winning that decided game against Hans Blankart from Belgium 4 3. Drago lost 4 0 to Dave, Dave Howard. How very impressive. Yes. Came through 4 2 against. Ricky Norris. I said, wow, we've just had that one come through. Marcus Campbell has just lost to Tirapong Pai Boone. That took some time on that, didn't it? Started at 8.30 this morning, best of seven, just finished now. Four hours, wow. Marco Fu is probably the standout performance of the day so far. Two centuries in defeating Peter Lyons by four frames to nil. The sign out ones for me, Ali Carter, who looked very good indeed, as, as did Michael White. <laughs> and John Higgins, let's not forget the second televised match of the day. He was very impressive. Defeating Lee Page by four frames to nil. He's really, really struggling with the lights, isn't he? You know, I know what it's like when you're out, it's out there. You're, you're sat if you're facing the lights. They need to be saved by, obviously, the, uh, the television cameras. But if they are in your line of sight, it really can blind you, and he seems to be having a few problems with them. Well, not as intended, but he'll take it. Davis surveying the audience. Such a great entertainer of the years. People that don't really know him think he's quite a, a serious character. Like him. He's not. He's a very witty man. Roy McLeod still locked in battle over on table two. Two frames each there with Jimmy Robertson. And Nigel Bond looks like that 3 0 lead he had over Justin Astley is about to be wiped away oh. because Listen. he's currently 3 2 up at 62 points behind in the sixth frame. So uh, go for. maybe, just maybe, we could be in for our first shock of the day. We'll see. I'll keep you updated with that one. Andrew Normans and the tough time today. Looks like he's going to go down 4 0. And that match literally started quite less, well less than an hour ago. He's currently 3 0 down his 62 points down in the fourth frame to uh, Anthony McGill. Another Steve Davis special. When it comes to the knowledge of the angles of the right shot to play, I don't think there's anyone better than him.
Well, he drops his head in disgust. The only reason being, he felt they had, there was a big target there to get the cue ball in behind the, uh, the yellow and the brown, but just my too thin a contact with the red. He's not happy out there, is he? He's showing some emotion. To let you know on table seven, Nigel Bond did lose that sixth game, so they're going into a decider in Justin Astley. Remember Astley the amateur? Well, that light really is bothering Holt, isn't it? Good cue ball, just creeping in behind the green there. Maybe he can just get an edge to this red. Most frustrated I've seen Davis for, for quite some time. Doesn't look at all happy with himself. Maybe there is an added pressure that he does know that wherever he goes, he's always going to get a, a good audience. And once again, that's happened here today. And he wants to put a good show on for them. But you know, the fact is, he is leading 2 1. And he's certainly far from his best. So, if anything, you can build on that. battle this. <laughs> well Davis has made the first mistake I and mean, what it cost him. Now he was the man that said you have to play as though it means everything and yet nothing and he's not doing that today, he seems to reflect the world on his shoulders. Well, he stayed down and watched that <coughs> one away because he thought for a second he'd missed that. He was catching that far knuck knuckle but it did drop.
Eight. Over on table four, Gerard Green is on three, two up on Gary Wilson. So that was a real battle there. <laughs> Over on table 11, the other, other change, Anthony Hamilton, now 2 0 up, and Michael Leslie. Thirteen. Fourteen. So you see, he doesn't have the right angle, but he has enough angle. Yeah, do something with the cue ball here. Nineteen. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. This is better from Holt. Forty-one in the, uh, the second frame, but so he hasn't looked at his best in his inbox so far today. But this is a far more positive. Thirty-nine. Yeah, he's just one of these players I prefer it when he's playing cricket. And he's just starting to get into his stride. Forty-six. Forty-seven. Davis looking on, no, his frame is slipping away. And Davis took the first before Holt took the second. So Davis just gives him up away from this man. Already today, we've had five centuries in this event. The highest being a 131 from Mar Marco Free, but Ali Kaz had a 122, Marcus Campbell had a 118 before losing. Marco Free, another 116, and Ali Kaz had 111. So it, it tells you the standard snooker that is being played here Six. in Antwerp today. This is 61. <laughs> He's showing some emotion, isn't he? The many faces of Steve Davis. It's not a good shot. I don't know you see the score, but he's 62 ahead, 59 on the table. But one 67. more would have absolutely made certain.
Michael Holt? 67. Good 67 from Holt. Should have been more, though. Davis needs a snooker. Top player Joe Perry just starting out his campaign over on uh, table nine up against Mike Dunn. <laughs> For Fred, my gold. <laughs> Davis calling it a day. Good 67 from Hull. That's what was needed for him. And he uh, levels the match. It's two frames each. Hull just had a word with Davis about the lighting. <laughs> two real characters on the circuit. Good to see him having a joke, even at this very important time of this match. So there we go. Michael Holt, too. Steve Davis too. Well, for the first time over on table two, Jimmy Robertson has taken the lead over Rory McLeod. And what a time to do it. Currently leading McLeod by three frames to two. On table three, Barry Hawkins three one up against the lady Rianne Evans. Evans taking the lead. On table four, Gerard Green back in the lead. Three two up over Gary Wilson. Mark Davis came through against Jürgen van der Bosch by four frames to nil. Jamie Burnett, who did so well in Poland a couple of weeks ago, he's one up on uh, Michael Wosley. On table six, Liam Highfield and Ian Glover just getting their match underway. Currently in the opening frame, Highfield 70 points up. The big story is on table seven, Nigel Bond in all sorts of trouble against the amateur Justin Astley. He was 3 nil up. Ashley has levelled the match at three each and is currently at the table in the deciding frame. We saw uh, Marcus Campbell lose to Tirafon Pibun by uh, four frames to three. Frame Over five. Dunn, just Steve Davis to break. Away. Over on table 11, Anthony Hamilton is currently two up on Michael Leslie. Fifth frame, massive frame for both players. Best of seven set up. Michael Holt talking about the lights again. Something's really bugging him, but as to be said, we've already had two matches on this TV table and sat in the chair where Holt is sat today were Mark Selby and John Higgins, and neither of them complained. So uh, I can't believe anything has changed since then. Touch a ball. Touch a ball for Davis makes the shot far easier. Just play it away from the red. Basically gives you a free shot.
foul. Well, it's just it's his head fault, wasn't it? <coughs> just too thick of contact. It's been a strange match because you look at it on paper and it's not that bad. Well, Holtz made breaks of 41 and 67, Davis 35, 36 and 50, so on paper it doesn't look too bad, but it's just seemed flat. They, both players haven't really fired up. Those lights are really, really annoying him. Well, good looking shot. Perfect position on the blue. It is amazing the first time we saw it this morning actually with the, the two amateur players. You walk out into a onto a televised table with the TV lighting. It's incredibly bright. You, you don't see it on television. When you're actually there and you walk out, you sit in your chair and think, my word. But it needs to be that way and you quickly acclimatise to it. That was a good shot. He put loads of left hand side on the cue ball to try and bring it back above the blue, but he massively misjudged that one. He didn't want to keep this break going now. This is another one of those shots that I feel that maybe nowadays he feels like he's forced to take on. I wouldn't want to play this, Brian. You've got to play it with pace. You get the cue ball back down towards the reds. The pot on his own, if you're just dropping it in, is extremely difficult. But adding to the fact that I start doing something with the cue ball, I don't put Davis Baker to knock this one in. Steve Davis, 13. It's hard to say to somebody as great as Steve Davis and everything that he's done, you know, what shot to play, but that kind of shot does seem to be letting him down nowadays. One. of financial gain this tournament isn't one of the biggest out there by a long way the winner will walk away with 12,000 euros on Saturday night but more importantly to these players is the ranking points available Davis not looking on unusual he seems to be concentrating more on the other matches than he does on this one and Holt not particularly happy with the shot he's just played as ever he's thinking ahead of a couple of shots by position on the colour to go into the pack of reds. Heifold took the opening frame in his match against Ian Glover. He's one up. Jimmy Bennett, two up against Michael. 17. 
Nigel Bond and Justin Astley still three each, nothing in it in that deciding frame. Elfie Burden is just taken to the table against Gareth Allen over on table 10. The match is coming thick and fast here at the Lotto Arena in Antwerp. This roll on, roll off setup. Last 128. The finals will be played Sunday night. Good contact again. Does it? I thought he deserved slightly more there. 24. Just checking to see how, how the amateurs have done today against the professionals. Obviously, on this television table, not at all well. You didn't take one frame. Just looking down the list, Elliot Slesser, we defeated uh, Craig Stedman 4 2. That was a good result. Nigel Bond's in danger against Justin Astley. So they're putting up a good show. Well, is Holt going to be tempted by this red or not? Because from one sat, it looks fairly straightforward, but something about it he doesn't quite like. Twenty-five. Six. Fifty one. Fifty two. Good break. This is beginning strong as the, uh, the match goes on. 35 ahead, beautiful, that makes it 40 ahead with 59 on. So just two of the, uh, the remaining four reds needed. Davis with some colour in his cheeks. I'm certainly feeling the pressure today.
57. Strange, isn't like it? Holt. These players have been doing that. In 57. They just cannot get over the winning line in one visit. Another good visit. I would like to be sat in his chair now, knowing the frame was safe, but as you can see, he was only 40 points ahead. This would be a real blow. Well, could Davis clear the table? Well, it all hinges pretty much on one shot, because if he can dislodge the red away from the pink, there's no reason why he can't do that, but slightly under hit that one. So not doing it this time, we'll just play for the red at the bulk end of the table. Perfectly judged. Perfectly judged. No, this is key. Not quite. Fourteen. If anything, he wanted to make contact with the pink there, really, didn't he? Take the pink away from the red, and not the way he's done it. Mind you, he's still very much in this frame. I thought when Holt was on 57, it was all over, but... And you see, Davis 26 points down. It's a poor shot. Steve Davis, 14. A poor shot that may have turned out okay. No, I don't know whether Hulk can get past this, uh, this blue to take the red onto left corner. some life in this one yet. <coughs> Great pop. Table nine, Joe Perry took the opening frame against Mike Dunn. He leads 1 0. Eight. Nine. the situation this would be a foregone conclusion. It's purely a question of Davis just holding his nerve. Shaking his head in disbelief Twelve. because on, on 57 it looks as though the frame would be his before missing that relatively straightforward red. 14. Seventeen. Twenty-one. 
26. Full credit to Steve Davis. Thirty-two. Oh, this will mean the world to him. Should he knock this in? Thirty-nine. Davis. Needing just one more frame for placing the last sixty-four. Davis leads by three frames to two. Put it a little, a little less. It's better. Holt still isn't happy That's about something. I think the lights oh, are affecting him when he sat in his chair. But as I mentioned earlier, we've had two matches already today on this TV table. And neither John Higgins nor Mark Selby complained about it. Well, as they look at that, let's just bring you up to date with the, uh, the other scores at the moment. Maury McLeod still 3 2 down to Jimmy Robertson. Gerard Green, 3-2 up on Gary Wilson. Jimmy Burnett, who did well a couple of weeks ago in Penguin, didn't he, before losing in the finals in the old Robertson. He's two up on Michael Wosley. Nigel Bond and Justin Astley. Astley the amateur. Remember, we've only had one amateur victory today so far. They're still locked in battle in that deciding frame. As it stands at the moment, Nigel Bond, 35 points. Astley on 14 points. Astley at the table, so uh, still a long way to go. And the other standout result at the moment, Anthony Hamilton two up on Michael Leslie and 50 points ahead in the third. Well, following this match with Jay Swell. Jay Swell now an amateur. Semi finals of the World Championships on a number of occasions. A very talented player. He's up against uh, another amateur, Jordan Brown, so that'll be an interesting one to watch. That'll basically be 15 minutes after the conclusion of this match. That gives them time to uh, clean the table and get everything sorted. Got all the drinks changed. Well, Davis on one frame away. Replacing the last 64. Frame 6. Mike Holt to break. So, that previous frame of frame that Holt looked set to win before Davies stepped in. Cleared the colours. After pinch it with that break of 39 after Holt had kicked off with a break of 57. They won two for two. Rory McLeod has levelled. Just mentioned the fact that all those supporting Rianne Evans, she was defeated in the end by Barry Hawkins before Frames. This is Davis. One. So Davis first in, lays a snooker and keeps the pressure firmly on Michael Holt.
doesn't look as though there's anything worth taking there, even if the red does go into the, uh, the centre pocket, the risk is, is massive. Oh, it's not touching. Full credit to Davis. Well, that was a cracking shot. And they've on table four as well. Gary Wilson is level with Gerard Green. He's actually uh, a few points ahead in the deciding frame as well there. So uh, maybe a small surprise taking place on table four as well. Bad miss. Steve Davis, six. Got himself into a great position earlier on in the sixth frame and then misses a, a straightforward red like that. Sixteen. Seventeen. Another decent shot. He's did that, but that's uh, well, he's had to go into the pack in this match. Four. It's amazing how the level of intensity changes as you get nearer to the finish of a match. 25. He's just about okay, he's slightly careless, shouldn't have made contact with the blue, but I don't expect him to miss this one. Thirty-eight. Wow. Thirty-nine. Unbelievable. Fell completely off the shot. Thought he'd missed it. Yeah, I can't quite believe that. Neither can I. Gives to show you, Sydney isn't in the same little moment, is he? And yet, scoring-wise, he's been okay up to now. Breaks of 41, 57, 67. Get along nicely here. 44. 
It gives the show he's a very talented player. 45. As we know in the world of snooker, talent isn't enough. You need a, that extra something if you want to make it to the very top. Sixty-six. Well, that's a situation fairly irrelevant, I'd say, because you can't expect him to uh, to miss this next one. But be mindful of the fact that what happened in that previous rain, however. Sixty-seven. Played. Oh, oh, fair play to Michael. The referee didn't realise that the, uh, the brain spot was available there. That's an easy mistake. 73. Right? 74. 81. So it's down to a decider. The question is now just how, uh, how big a break can Holt make here. 82. Certainly the highest of the match so far. Oh, it doesn't look like we're going to see a century in this one either. We had 80 87. So it'll be uh, 85 for Higgins on this match table. On. Maybe we will. <laughs> when the frame doesn't matter, it's all good. Davis doesn't look impressive, does he? No. Um, blue. blue ball. Ninety-three. Well, he's not going to take the highest break prize because that currently stands with Marco Fu at 131, but still a very nice uh, 120 on. Can he clear the table? I think the only problem is going to be the, uh, the brown, isn't it? 7 113 He's gone for the exhibition shot 
unlucky. Fantastic. I've got hope. Levels a match at three frames each. He's been impressive actually in the last three frames. Look at frame four, 67. Frame five of 57. Lost that one. And frame six. A fantastic century of 113. There's the score. Three frames each. We're set for a decider. There's also a decider going on on table two at the moment. Jimmy Robertson. Currently 40 ahead in that one against Roy McLeod. It's a fantastic 11 table setup. Action all day here in Belgium. Let's go through the scores quickly while the uh, referee sets the table back up. Well, Gary Wilson, the, uh, the amateur, is 30 points ahead. The decider against Gerard Green, so there could be another shot there. Uh, Jamie Burnett comfortably ahead, two up on table five over Michael Wosley. Nigel Vaughan and Justin Assey, they're still going. That deciding frame has been going on for some 25 minutes now. There's nine points separate. Assey, the amateur, at one stage, was three frames down. Mike Dunn's taken the uh, second frame. Yeah, one table nine against Joe Paris. That's one frame each. And Anthony Hamilton cruising along very nicely indeed. And he's currently three up on Michael Leslie. So here we go then. The winner of this one. Set to play John Higgins in the last 64. As we saw earlier, in great form. Seventh in the siding frame. Steve Davis to break. He knew halfway up he'd missed it. The clean onto the hope that it might come back towards that pocket, but half chance here for Holt. Always had a chance to look with the cue ball. One. And I don't think it's turned out in his favour. Blue ball. My gold. One. Contact. It was a very fine shot, actually.
very cagey as one would expect. Davis trying to use all of his experience to get him through this one. And Tim to score, and he hasn't been as strong as a Holt. Holt's looks actually impressive when he's got in amongst the balls. And that's going to be the danger for, uh, for Davis. Obviously, got to keep his man off the table. Stay there from Davis. Completely misjudged that one. Horrible contact, and you'd have been perfect on that rest of the, uh, the right corner. Eight. You've just seen glance off of it. Touching ball. A touching ball, that makes things even worse. Great chance. He's gone begging. Well, unless he can lean over. Well, I don't think that was on for one moment, but maybe that's the only option he's got. You're always playing the shot blind, you. You're looking away from the pocket. But if he could avoid the, the black with the cue ball and get it back at the table, he's worth taking on. I just don't think he's on. Played the right shot. He hasn't played it particularly well, but he played the right choice of shot. Michael Holt, eight. Lots of very tense matches in the arena at the moment. Obviously the one we're concentrated on, Holt and Davis, but you've also got a deciding frame over on table two with McLeod and Robertson. 
Decide in frame on table four with Wilson and Green. And we'll decide on Bond. table seven with Nigel Bond and Justin Astley. So uh, some very tense snooker being played here at the Lotto Arena in Antwerp. The third European Tour event of the season. Pretty much all he could do. Six. Again, Six. nothing special, but he has extended his lead to 15 points. OK, the red is on for Davis, but I think fair to say during this match, Davis hasn't been great over distance, so... I oh, hope he's shaking his head in disgust. a shot like that. Fantastic. You could not have cued that any better. That was absolutely perfect. No body movement, the object ball sent to the pocket. And he's done a good shot here though. I mean there is a red available in the cluster that does go to left corner but trying to land on it is so difficult. Maybe forced to make contact here with the reds. Oh, he's gone for it. Well, if he can, well, his body language suggests he's not on it. Eight. If that's the case, that's a, a big chance gone begging there. Jimmy Robertson looks good over on table two. Currently, the score on the deciding frame is Robertson 66, McLeod on 22. So, um, a surprise could be about to happen over on table two. That's good on table four because Gary Wilson is 31.7 decided against Gerard Green. Steve Davis, eight. He'll be disappointed, but the one positive he's left the table in control. play it. Bump. Apologising to Davis, didn't play it. That hurts. When you sat in your chair and you think you played a great safety shot and then somebody flukes one like that. It's not the fluke itself, it's not the one point, but it's the potential of what it could cost you. Could prove very expensive for Davis. Jimmy Robertson defeated. Six. That's another big name, mate. A couple of big names hanging on. Seven. And quite clearly, one of those is Steve Davis.
13. Twenty one. Twenty two. Twenty nine. along very nicely indeed Davis I mean he's seated literally can do here things not looking good for Davis in the last three frames Holt has scored heavily in every one of them which is 67 57 113 he's at the table now 30 not quite as intended Absolutely nothing you can do. You've just got to sit in your chair and watch. It's so frustrating. You know, the most painful thing about it for Davis, obviously this came from a fluke. Don't get me wrong, I think on paper, looking at the facts, that, that Holt has potentially played the better snooker, but even so... 35. It still hurts when it comes to a fluke red. Thirty-six. Maybe it's a thirty-six. Let's make it forty-three. Taking fifty points ahead. A Sixty-seven on the table. He's almost resigned himself to the fact that he will not be coming back to the table. Forty-four. beyond doubt I said at the start of this match that either player is going to have to perform well today because 59 the winner was playing John Higgins and Higgins was in great form this morning Holt's done that 60 so very capable indeed made that tremendous century in the previous frame I know this came off the back of a flu but even so you've still got to pop them afterwards 67 Marco Fu earlier today in his match, knocked in two centuries. Be nice to see Holt do the same. It's been a very high standard of centuries. 74. Today. 79. Eighty one. Thirty 
84. Ninety-three. Maybe doing well now to get the century, won't he? Fantastic shot. Ninety-nine. One more needed. in the last 64 and a match against John Higgins. Absolutely fantastic performance. Well, that's all for me, Mark Johnson-Allen. Clive Everton will be with you in 15 minutes' time to guide you through the action for the rest of the day here in Antwerp. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon.